Hello data hounds and welcome to another installment of sourcing GIS data. Today we are going to be looking at a particular new data source that has come out in the journal Nature. But before we get started I would just like to say a big thank you to everybody that's recently subscribed to the Bird GIS YouTube channel. It's really great to see a surge in subscriptions like that. So if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button. And those of you that are subscribed will obviously already have liked the Bird GIS Facebook page and you will have seen this post. Uh, so here we've got the post direct from uh, the journal Nature. And you may have seen that one of my colleagues who lives and works in Northern Ireland was a little bit upset because it looks like Northern Ireland has no trees. Now I've been to Northern Ireland recently. I know people in Northern Ireland I'm pretty sure there are some trees there. So we're going to have a look at how to get hold of this data set, manipulate it and check out to see what's going on in Northern Ireland. So if we click on the post, this will take us through to Nature, Nature's website. And here we have the article itself. So we've got the authors, the article number, when it was published. And we also have the full text, which is great to see. Now you can take your own time to read this, I'm just in the uh, interest of time, I'm just going to skip through this, but there is really important metadata in the text, obviously. So the first thing to note is that we have an Inspire compliant one kilometer by one kilometer grid for these data. So that's good, uh, we've got a lot of background about how the data set was put together. We've got this picture which shows Northern Ireland barren of trees. It can't be true. Let's find out. So if we keep going, you can see they've done other um, outputs as well using these data. And if we get through the methods, eventually we get down to data records. And this is where the actual data sets are available from. So the authors state that they have two data sets for tree occurrences at respectively species and genus level. So we can get both these data sets from Figshare on this link, super bn. So if I click on this, it will take us through to that page. And just reading on a little bit here, we can also see that We've got CSV format to begin with, so this is not in raster format, which is quite interesting. Um, that's going to save the authors a lot of space in terms of storing the data. Uh, we've also got the coordinates in the ETRS89LAEA reference coordinate system. So, what does that mean? Well, that tells us what coordinate system the data has been provided in. And that is very important because it tells our GIS where in the world to draw it. So if we Google the ETRS 89 LAEA, you will see some information about the European grid. It's on Wikipedia. Great. This website, spatialreference.org, will actually tell us what the code is for this projection. And you can see the area that it applies to lots of other information about it and this is what we're interested in. So we've got EPSG 3035 smashing. I'm going to make a note of that. Then I'm going to go back to the Figshare website. Here we go. This is where the data are stored. So we have a collection here. Do, 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 do. Down at the bottom, we have metadata, very important. You should definitely have a read of that. We've got the extent of occurrences, occurrences, location, shape file, tree occurrences at genus level, tree occurrences at species level. I'm going to go straight for that one. And if we click on that, we can see a little sample of what the data looks like. So these are our X, Y coordinates. Um, in the text, it actually tells us that the, uh, the coordinates represent the centroid 
of an Inspire compliant one by one kilometer grid. So that will be the center of each grid square is reflected by these coordinates. So I'll download the CSV. Here we go. EU forest species, that looks good. Okie dokes. And I've already downloaded it here, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, that's just for demonstration purposes. Now that I've downloaded it, I am going to go into QGIS and I'm going to add this CSV to a new map. So in order to do this, I'm just going to go through this quickly, but we do have another vid about adding CSVs, which is going to go into a bit more detail. So you can see that in your own time. Ba, 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 ba. I'm just going to check all of this. Okay, looks like it's going to come in fine. Now loading the CSV, once I hit OK, might take a little time because it is quite large. And it's going to ask me what CRS I want to use for EU forest species. Now it might come up with something strange other than ETRS 89, uh, the LAEA. And if it does come up with something strange, remember that we took our EPSG code. So if you just type into the filter 3035, then you can actually go straight to the correct coordinate system. We'll OK that, and boom, there we go. Now the astute amongst you will notice that this is in fact a point layer. It is not a raster layer. Hmm. But we can see generally the outline of countries, very useful, and the area that we're interested in is Northern Ireland, so I'm just going to zoom into that. Huh. I'm also going to add the Open Layers plugin, and I'm going to do a quick Google Satellite. Yeah, that's fine. Just going to move the Google satellite to the bottom. Mm. So although Northern Ireland does have trees, they seem to be rather underrepresented. Let's have a look what trees we have. Here we have Picea sitchensis. Okay, great news. Let's just zoom into that area a little bit. Well, it definitely looks to me like there are more trees than reflected by this data set. So we might need to do a little more investigation into this. But to start with, that's how you can get the data into QGIS. And next time we will probably take a look at how we can knock this out into a raster format. So thanks for watching and don't forget to check out more videos for more tips and also hit the subscribe button and you will be the first to hear about new vids.